In this video, we'll start to look at errors in statistical hypothesis testing, and I'll describe something called type 1 error. Let's start by looking at a scenario. In some Olympic sports, like boxing, in each match, competitors are randomly assigned to wear either a red or blue uniform. Researchers asked, does uniform color give boxers an advantage? This seems unlikely, since colors are randomly assigned. Surely, it's just the athlete's ability in training, rather than the uniform, that give them an advantage. The parameter is the percent of matches won by the competitor wearing, let's say, red, which we'll write as pi. So then the null hypothesis is that the competitor wearing red wins just 50% of the matches, that is, pi equals 50%. And for the moment, let's say we're looking at a set of 25 matches. Let's set up a model to reflect this scenario. So we'll set up a model with two options, red and blue, and sample 25 at a time. From the first sample, we get that red won 72% of the matches, and we can repeat this many times. Here, we'll do 1,000 repetitions. And now, let's look at the sampling distribution of these percentages. Here is a dot plot showing the sampling distribution of the percent of matches won by the competitor wearing the red uniform. And let's remember that the parameter is the percent of matches won by the competitor wearing red, and the null hypothesis is that that percentage is 50%. That is, red has no advantage. Let's think about what each dot means. For example, this dot represents one set of 25 matches in which red won 60% of the matches, assuming the uniform color has no effect. And in most of these 25 match sets, the competitor wearing red wins between 33 and 67 percent of the matches. But occasionally, even when the uniform color has no effect, the competitor wearing red wins a really large percentage of the matches, or a really small percentage, just due to sampling variation. Now, one question we should ask is, are there any sets of 25 matches that are strong evidence against the null hypothesis? Pause the video and think about how you might answer this question. What we'd need to do is look at the 5% of sets with statistics that are furthest from the expected value of 50%. By the very way hypothesis testing works, if sampling variation happened to give you one of these sets, you'd have strong evidence against the null hypothesis. So if you got one of these sets, the null hypothesis is true, but you would reject it. And that would be bad. This would constitute what's known as a type 1 error. In this scenario, it's when uniform color doesn't give an advantage, but we conclude that it does just because sampling variation happened to give us a set with a really high or low percentage of wins for red. In more formal terms, a type 1 error is when the null hypothesis is true, but we reject it. Now, what is the chance that you would make a type 1 error? Let's look again at that sampling distribution. If you use 5% as a threshold for whether a statistic is strong evidence against the null hypothesis, and another way to write this is alpha equals 5%, then any of these statistics would lead you to reject the null hypothesis. That is, 5% of statistics would lead you to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, there is a 5% probability that you would make a type 1 error. Let's think about what this really means. Suppose you want to know whether jelly beans cause acne. So, Concerned that jelly beans cause acne, you send scientists to investigate. They reluctantly agree to do so. And after analyzing their data, they get a p-value that is larger than 5%. So they don't reject the null hypothesis that jelly beans don't cause acne. But then you wonder whether it's a particular color of jelly bean that causes acne. So you send your scientists back to investigate. The scientist got a p-value larger than 5% when looking at purple jelly beans, and brown jelly beans, and pink jelly beans, and blue, and teal, and salmon, and red, and turquoise, and magenta, and yellow. Then the scientist got a p-value larger than 5% when looking at 
gray jelly beans and tan jelly beans and cyan jelly beans, but they did get a p-value lower than 5% when looking at green jelly beans, but not with mauve jelly beans or beige or lilac or black or peach or orange. So they reported that green jelly beans were linked to acne. Now, it's not true that jelly beans cause acne. In other words, the null hypothesis really is true. But the scientists performed 20 hypothesis tests with this true null hypothesis. And, just due to sampling variation, one of the 20 samples produced a statistic that had a p-value that was below 5%. So this conclusion, that green jelly beans cause acne, is a type 1 error. And, since the scientists were using 5% as a threshold for a strength of evidence, this shows what it means to have a 5% probability of causing a type 1 error. One out of every 20 hypothesis tests will lead you to an incorrect conclusion. In summary, a type 1 error is when the null hypothesis is true, but you get a statistic that leads you to reject it. If you use an alpha value of 5%, that is, if you use 5% as the p-value threshold for whether or not a statistic is strong evidence against the null hypothesis, then there is a 5% chance of making a type 1 error. You do have some control over this. You can reduce this probability by using a smaller value of alpha.